Hi, my name's Timothy King. I'm a myotherapist in Australia. I've treated myofascial pain and dysfunction for some 20 years. My colleagues and I have seen over 100,000 consultations and we've had heaps of success with chronic pain, but also TMD, orofacial pain, breathing related disorders, swallowing disorders. And the secret, a big part of the secret is fascia. And so today I wanna to share with you about fascia. Now fascia is a trendy word these days and so it is subject to overinflated claims but if you can understand the continuity of fascia and thereby have a more functional approach in the way you treat your patients, in the way you administer your interventions, then you're going to be ahead of the game. You're going to be up to date with what we're learning in, in this really exciting field. Technically, fascia is the connective tissue that provides a whole body, continuous, three-dimensional matrix of structural support. So that means it penetrates and surrounds all muscles, muscle bundles, muscle fibers, bones, nerves, and not to mention our internal organs. To put it another way, fascia is the biological fabric of the body. For the sake of this lecture, we're going to use the word fascia in the more traditional medical sense to describe the sheets of connective tissue that are just under the skin, surrounding muscles, and groups of muscles. But what I really want you to take away from today is the fact that fascia is not just a connective tissue. It's a sensory organ that literally communicates to the central nervous system about whatever it is covering. Now, fascia has historically been ignored by research. It's been simply seen as a benign connective tissue that holds everything together. Throughout history, we'd study the body by breaking it into its component systems, and we still do today. But fascia was simply the connective tissue that surgeons would cut to get to the real organs. Now, some 50 years ago, a cardiac physician who served JFK in the White House, Jeanette Travell, observed consistent referred pain patterns from muscle. So her and her colleague David Simons invested 50 years of clinical observation into this phenomena. The pain patterns that they observed are still today the most comprehensive charting of these poorly understood but incredibly common pain patterns. They titled their seminal work Myofascial Pain and Dysfunction, the Trigger Point Manuals, and they identified localized fascial dysfunction that restricted movement and referred pain. Look, they were really ahead of their time in suspecting that the fascia had something to do with these incredibly common clinical symptoms. Now we have come a long way. In recent years, thanks to the dissectional studies by orthopedic surgeon Carla Stecco in Italy, and the clinical application of these observations by body workers like Thomas Myers, We've learned that fascia is not, well, can not only cause local restriction and pain like Travell observed, but fascia has global mechanical continuity and thus plays an essential role in posture and movement. So let's talk about the fascia that's most clinically relevant to us in our setting. There are multiple global fascial continuities, but we're gonna to focus today on the deep front line. The dissection that we're gonna watch right here illustrates continuity, uh, that is, forced transmission through epimysial and aponeurotic fascia from literally the toes to the tongue. So here we start with the foot. This is the uh, flexor digitorum longus, the deep posterior calf muscles, and into the inner thigh and adductors. This is all connected fascially. It's continuous mechanically. Those adductors anchor into the hip flexors, iliopsoas, and we can see here uh, quadratus lumborum, and both these hip flexors and large lumbar muscles anchor into the crura of the diaphragm. And so there's this direct connection between respiratory, posture, and then the same uh, fascial continuity continues through the thorax, the anterior throat, the, uh, and the floor of the mouth, and indeed the tongue itself. In other words, there's a direct mechanical connection between orofacial function and tongue function 
and diaphragmatic breathing, lumbar and cervical spinal posture, gait, etc. And it really helps explain why Dr. Zaghi and other practitioners have often seen dramatic improvements in posture and posture-related pain following frenuloplasty. Now, fascia and skeletal muscle appears to have a movement pattern memory such that forward head posture, which we know is not good, may perpetuate restriction in that deep front line or generate restriction in that deep front line through postural habits. So let's consider a forward head posture in relation to the anterior neck, jaw, and head. Protruding the head forward places the supra and infrahyoids under tension, causing a downward tension on the mandible and a tendency to mouth breathing. The same retruded mandible, of course, changes the occlusion of the teeth, and again, retrusion of the mandible irritates or perpetuates irritation, can potentially perpetuate irritation of the retrodiscal tissues of the TMJ. Now this posture also places the sternocleidomastoid at a biomechanical disadvantage and this muscle is one of the most common yet poorly recognized causes of severe cervicogenic headache. As such, postural retraining, myofunctional exercises and when indicated, frenuloplasty must all go hand in hand. So when we consider the continuity of the deep front line, it really makes sense that often the frenuloplasty procedure can be the key that unlocks a cascade of biomechanical improvement. So we can go even a step further and just consider the mechanical continuity fascially of the orofacial complex. Thanks to the work of Carla Stecco and these illustrations by Christy Gatto, we know that muscles involved in chewing and swallowing are completely interconnected by fascia. The temporal fascia continues into the paratidomasseteric fascia, the masseter and the medial pterygoid are attached such that they may, may be considered like a sling. The lateral pterygoid fascia joins with the TMJ joint capsule and with the buccophangeal fascia. It's the beautiful functional continuity of this temporomandibular orofacial fascial complex that we are retraining with our myofunctional exercises. And so to quote Carla Stecco, the open mouth position changes the normal tensional relationship in this fascial network, resulting in abnormal activity of the muscle spindles connected to the swallowing muscles, and this explains why swallowing with the mouth open is almost impossible. Carl is referencing there the fact that muscle spindles, which we thought were in muscles, are actually in fascia. They're mechanically stimulated and help us with posture and movement. Uh, this lecture is too short to jump into that. That's for another day. So can we improve fascial function with conservative interventions? And the answer is yes. Firstly, exercise. Myofunctional exercises have been demonstrated to improve this biomechanical integration of tongue, airway, and cervical posture. Secondly, my colleagues and I have found that specific and brief manipulation of the fascia will change muscular function and literally reorganize movement patterns. In some cases, the application of a neuromyofascial technique like FNFT, is the difference between success and failure. So my colleagues and I have consistently seen changes in bite position, improvement in articular TMJ function, improvement in swallowing, airway patency, TMJ pain, tooth pain, and often achieved in literally minutes. Now when done correctly, the response is actually so fast that, it, that we can't attribute it to mechanically massaging the muscle loose. Changes often occur in seconds. So my colleagues and I discovered this about 20 years ago and we presumed we must be stimulating a neurological response by stimulating the fascia. But 20 years ago, there was no real science to explain this effect. Yet we continued doing it because it was simply so clinically effective and non-invasive. Today, we actually have some science to explain our observations. Here is a fascial layer of loose connective tissue filmed in vivo. We know that the fascia globally is richly innervated by some hundred million receptors body-wide. And guess where the richest fascial innervation is? Here is that same layer of fascia in vitro. The highest innervation is not in the muscle, it's in the epimysium, that's the surface of the muscle, and it's in this loose connective tissue layer between the skin and the muscle. 
This is exactly the area that we have been stimulating with this FNFT approach. So it makes sense that stimulating this superficial fascia is most likely the most efficient way to stimulate a neurological response. So FNFT is described as a neuromyofascial technique. And we've discovered that combining the knowledge of three big areas of research, myofascial pain patterns, global fascial mechanics, and thirdly, the current pain science that makes it clear that our interventions do not really mechanically change connective tissue, but stimulate a neural response. This means that this approach is not slow and heavy like most myofascial manual therapies, but it's actually very fast and very functional. And this makes it accessible to more than just manual therapies. And that's why we're sharing this knowledge now uh, very broadly. No, lo no oil, no long holds, non-invasive, and above all, a three-minute protocol for the orofacial muscles is something that my functional therapists, speech pathologists, dentists, and orthodontists can literally integrate into a standard consult. So I've collaborated with a dental practitioner, Sarah Beach, in Australia. She's also a great myofunctional therapist, and we've customized FNFT for the orofacial therapy world. See, this understanding of the fascial continuity and a technique that can resolve pain and improve function so quickly is a game changer for TMD pain, TMJ clicking, trismus, normalizing bite position, and resolving pre or post dental procedure pain, not to mention neck pain and headaches. The effectiveness of orofacial myofunctional therapy is enhanced with such techniques. And it's so simple that we have orthodontists, TMJ specialists, dentists, and myofunctional therapists regularly using FNFT as an adjunct now. Finally, I teach the application of FNFT to the whole body, to manual therapists, via a six-week online program. If you're interested in that, check out fastandfunctional.com or direct the manual therapist who you collaborate with to check that out. And if you're interested in the application of FNFT for the dental, speech, and myofunctional therapy professions, then check out Facebook and have a look for the group called FNFT, Craniofacial Pain and TMD. 